Okay, so we're going to discuss today about the antigen and antibody. So we have here the topic regarding the, the nature of your antigen antibody. So we discuss first here about our antigen. So antigen or immunogen or other name for that is your agglutinogen. Okay, so basically when we speak about the antigen, this is a foreign substance that can stimulate our immune response. So, this can be coming from your microbial organisms or it could also be a non-microbial organisms that enter the body of the host and eventually try to simulate an immune response. And uh, the simulation of the immune response here brought about by the entry of your antigen would result here to your antibody production. Okay, so we have this one. The antigen here is being recognized primarily by our immune response, primarily because of the antigenic determinant, or you call that one as your epitope. Okay, so this is the antigen binding site that can bind to the paratope of the anti paratope of the antibody to produce your antigen antibody complex. Okay, so again, we speak about the immunogen or immunogenic. If your antigen is immunogenic. That one has the capability of uh, stimulating an immune response. So, however, not all antigens are immunogenic. Okay, so only those considered here to be immunogenic are those which are capable of the uh, stimulation of our immune response. Some of our antigens serve only here as a marker, surface marker. So, if they are not eventually um, stimulating an immune response, so mean to say they are not immunogenic. Okay, so there are some antigens which are considered to be more immunogenic compared to the others. So we'll be discussing later on the different factors which try to determine the immunogenicity of our antigen. Okay, so we have here some of our immunogens. So again, these are the antigens which are highly immunogenic. They can stimulate your immune response. Okay, the first one, we have your histocompatibility complex. We can have here your MHC or the major histocompatibility complex. Other name for that is our HLA, that's the human leukocyte antigen. So when we speak about the human leukocyte antigen, so this one is human leukocyte. So this is an, an antigen that can be found in all nucleated cells in our body. Okay, so the human leukocyte antigen actually try to determine the success of your transplantation. So, in terms of the recipient and the donor, so in order for them to have here um, successful transplantation that would prevent the rejection of the transplanted the tissues or organ, then um, the donor recipient should be compatible with their MHC or the HLA. And also the HLA, so being highly immunogenic and also associated with some of our autoimmune disorders. And of course, allergic reaction has also been attributed related to our HLA. So we have also here autoantigen. So this is a self-reactive uh, antigen. So it's, it would be, uh, this one considered still here as our immunogenic because it is stimulating. It can stimulate our immune response. And we have also here the blood group antigen. So we have here the AB or even the RHD antigen. Those are also highly immunogenic. And also to try to determine the success of our blood transfusion. So I mean to say the recipient and the donor of the unit of blood should be compatible with their blood groups, including your ABO and RH. Because if not, this also result here to the rejection process. It's because, again, our blood group antigens are also highly immunogenic. Okay, now we discuss the different factors that uh, try to determine the immunogenicity or the pathogenicity of our antigens. Okay, so how immunogenic antigens, this is actually try to explain why some antigens are highly immunogenic compared to the others. Okay, the number one, we have here the chemical nature of our antigen. So for the chemical nature of the antigen, okay, the more complex the antigen here, okay, the more immunogenic it is. So, in terms of that, we can arrange our macromolecules in terms of the complexity of the structure. So, the, the first one we have here, your, okay, the first one we have here, your protein. So, highly complicated structure 
making this one as highly immunogenic, followed here by our carbohydrates. Provided here that our carbohydrates is in complex with the other structure. For example, we have your polysaccharide, so it would have made up of uh, several repeating units of your monosaccharide. Glycoprotein, so this one is a combination with your protein, carbohydrate plus your protein. And could also your glycolipids, which is a combination of your carbohydrates and your lipids, making that one as highly immunogenic. But if you have just a simple monosaccharide, that one is less immunogenic. Lipids and nucleic acid are not immunogenic because they have a very simple na structure. Okay, then we have here, um, again, um, the chemical nature of our antigen determines here its ability to simulate an immune response. So again, if your um, substance or molecules is not that highly complex in terms of the structure, that one is not immunogenic. So like in, for, uh, in the case, for example, of our synthetic polymers, like your Teflon, okay, the nylon here, okay, they're being used here as materials for making artificial heart valves. So this one is being put on your body, inside your body, or even in the elbow replacement. So since they are not immunogenic, so ginagamit sila as the material na ginagamit for those, like for example, artificial heart valve na lilagay sa katawan ni patient natin para hindi sila ma-reject ng immune system. Okay? It's because here, pag ito ay highly complicated na structure, it become immunogenic, you could not put that one inside the body of the patient artificially. Okay? Because that one will be uh, stimulating an immune response and that result here to the rejection process. That's why ito ay hindi naman sila complex. They're not immunogenic, kaya pwede silang gamitin para magiging ganitong mga materials in order for that to be put on inside the body of the patient without, without rejecting it. Okay, another factor here that try to determine the immunogenicity of our antigen would be the, the degree of the foreignness of the antigen. So the more foreign it is, the more the body could not recognize it one, the more immunogenic it is. The more your body could not um, identify that that one is part of your body, so the more it try to uh, induce for your immune system to be activated in order for that to remove that antigen. Okay, so we can classify our antigen here based on the, okay, how foreign it is. So we have the term here, okay, also uh, autologous antigen, that's your self antigen. We have also here your isologous or sengeneric, sengenetic, ganon, that one among twins. Then we have also here your homologous or your cosmos or allogenic antigen. So when speak about the allogenic, that one are from the different individual. So ibang tao, magkaibang tao. Then we have also here heterologous, on the other hand, or you call it one your xenogenic. So that's coming from your animal and human, different species. So this is being uh, arranged according to the um, degree of their foreignness. So ito pinaka, okay, so least immunogenic and we have here more immunogenic papunta dito. Another one, we have here your molecular weight. So again, molecular weight also try to determine how your antigen will be immunogenic or not. So at least it should have here at, at least a molecular weight of 10,000 Dalton to be considered that one as our immunogenic. Okay, so like for example, your albumin would have 40,000 the molecular weight, so we consider that one as immunogenic. We have also here your IgM, IgG, so sobrang laki nila. And your hemocyanin could have your molecular weight of 1 million. So it's an excellent na immunogen. We have also here the term haptens. So haptens, they are considered to be as, okay, this is your antigen, only that that one is present in a very small molecular weight or concentrate small molecular weight. This is a small antigen. It can stimulate an immune response only when it is being, um, added or being combined with another substance. Okay, it is capable of uh, simulating antibody production, only that you need to enhance that one by binding with your carrier. Okay, so in order for that then to stimulate your immune response, so pwede siyang carrier natin, it can, bound, it can bind with your protein, mga ganon, para lumaki ang size niya. And therefore, it can stimulate your immune response. 
Okay, then we have also here the structural stability. So again, the more stable the structure of your molecule or substance, the more immunogenic it is. Then we have also here complexity. So the more complex the structure of your substance, the more immunogenic it is. Then we have also here the term adjuvant. So adjuvant are substances that can enhance how our immune response by stimulating or helping here uh, your immune system through your cell mediated immunity or your humoral mediated immunity, helping your T, T lymphocyte, helping your B lymphocyte, and we have also here enhancing also the activity of our phagocytes. So we have an example of our adjuvants. So first one, we have your aluminum or alum. This is approved by the Food and Drug Administration, the U.S. Primarily, when this is an adjuvant that's being given along with your HEPA B vaccine. Para sa nito, number one, it can increase the size. Okay, of course, if you are giving the vaccine, di ba, you are giving an organisms. Okay, or of course, that one is your HEPA B, you are giving HEPA B to the patient. Okay, to increase para magiging... Because your main objective here, why why are you giving the vaccine is to allow the body of the patient to be stimulated in order for that to produce an antibody. So you are giving this aluminum here para mag-enhance ang ating uh, microorganism given to the patient by increasing the size. Okay, and then para makilala siya ng immune system ni binigyan mo ng vaccine and that would allow the body of that to develop an antibody. The second one, prevent rapid escape of the antigen para hindi siya agad-agad mawala until such time na makilala siya, ma-recognize siya ng host immune system para makapag-produce ka ng antibody. Okay, so it's because here na, like for example, if you're giving the vaccine in this form, for example, HEPA B vaccine, tapos na nagbigay ka nga, hindi naman siya nakilala ng immune system ni uh, recipient or, for example, nawala siya agad sa tissue ni patient kung saan ka nag-inject. So, hindi siya makilala. Hindi pa nagkaroon ng simulation ng immune system. And therefore, mangyari ay walang mapuproduce na antibody. So, mavoid lang ang, ang pagbigay mo ng vaccine to the patient. Another example of our adjuvant, we have your complete front Complete front adjuvants made up of the following. We have your mineral oil emulsifier. We have also the mycobacteria the concentration 0.5 mg per ml. So same pa din. Why are you giving this as an adjuvant? Because number one, it increases the antigen size. It tries to prolong the antigen on the tissue side para siya mawala. And of course, it tries to enhance also here the phagocyte para magkaroon ka ng immune stimulation and you would end up with the production of your antibody. So, ito lahat ang kanilang activity naman. Helping your simulating or helping your cell mediated immunity, your T lymphocyte with its activity or function, helping also your B lymphocytes and of course, enhancing the activity of our phagocytes leading for your simulation of your immune response resulting to your antibody production. Okay, next we have here the antibodies. So antibody, other name for that is your immunoglobulin or agglutinin or immunoglobulin. Okay, so antibodies are being produced primarily as a response to antigenic simulation by our antigen. So we are also determining the concentration of your antibodies or as a titer of your antibody primarily, like in a case, for example, with your hepatitis B profile to primarily determine the stage of the disease process. Okay, so again, you are producing antibody. The main function of antibody is to eliminate, combine, and neutralize the antigen responsible for its production. Okay, so we have here the basic structure of our antibody. So this is a typical uh, monomer na antibody. It's a Y-shaped antibody. Okay, so we have here the basic part. So we have here, okay, so this is your heavy chain. Paganyan. This is another heavy chain. Okay, then we have here light chain and we have also here another, okay, light chain. Okay, for the heavy chain, okay, the heavy chain of your antibody is primarily encoded in the chromosome number 14, in order for you to make your heavy chain. 
the heavy chain of your antibody, although we have two heavy chain here, each of the heavy chain of the antibody is only made up of uh, one type. Okay, example of that, your antibody heavy chain can be immune. Okay, in the case of your IgM, your heavy chain could also be alpha. That's for the IgA. Could also be your delta in the case of your IgD. Could also be a gamma in the case of your IgG. Could also be an epsilon in the case of your IgE. We to say the heavy chain of your antibody determine the type of your antibody. So, isa lang siya dapat, isang type lang siya dapat ng heavy chain. Okay, the light chain. So, this is your light chain. There are also two light chain in your typical monomer antibody. And the light chain could be a kappa or a lambda. Hindi sila, hindi pwedeng pareho. So, it could be your kappa which is encoded in a chromosome number 2. And your lambda is being encoded in chromosome number 22. Okay. Then we have another part here. We have your Hinz region. So this is your Hinz region here. Okay. The Hinz region is actually the hyperangular region of your antibody. And that determine the flexibility of your antibody. I try to move because of the Hinz region. Okay, then we have also here your disulfide bond. So if you have your light chain, for example, here, this is your light chain, this is your heavy. So we have a bond here that try to bind between your light chain, the heavy chain, this is your disulfide bond. And between also your heavy chain, so this is your heavy, and another heavy here. So we have another, okay, disulfide, must sulfur in a bond. Okay, that try to bind here between also your heavy chain. So we have here the different parts of our antibody. So the first one we have here, the region. We can divide our antibody into two region. We have here the variable region. So kaya ito antibody natin. So we have your light chain. Again, this is your heavy chain. So dito sa taas, okay, this is your variable region apart. Okay, the variable region is being called here as a variable region because it's made up of a different sequence of your amino acid. So what constitutes here our variable region? So since this is your light chain, so dito siya sa taas is your variable na light chain na part. Ito na part lang, dito. And we have also here the variable na heavy because this is your heavy chain. Sa taas nito, okay, that's your variable region. So, variable light, and we have also here the variable heavy region. Another one, we have also here the constant region. So, the remaining part, to pababa na, that's already your constant region. And it's being called here as your constant region because it's made up of the same or constant or the same sequence of your amino acid. So, what constitutes here the constant region? So, let this is your, this is your light, diba? So, that's your constant light region and we have also here the remaining part this is also your constant heavy okay then we can also divide further here our especially our constant region into your domain okay for in the case for example if your igm ige so there are these are made up of five domains paano siya naging five domains Okay, so kung ito ang ating um, IgM saka Ig, so there are five domains. So, the five domains here, so we're talking about this part. This could be divided into domains. This is your variable na domain, one variable domain. And further, we can divide here your constant region. Diba dito sa taas is the variable, dito sa baba ng constant. We can divide that one further into several domains. Okay, so this, this is your hinge region. The constant domain here above your hinge region, that's your CH1. So, ito siya, so H1. Below your hinge, we have your CH2, we have also CH3, and we have your C CH4. So, bibilangin natin. So, for in the case of your IgM, saka Ig in antibody, there are five domains. One variable domain here, and there are one, two, three, four. So, H1, so H2, so H3, so H4. 
na constant domain that gives you a 5 na domain for if that was your IgM or IgE na antibody. And if you are asked and what, and what domain, okay, that's your IgM and IgE, their foot can be found. So, that's a, that's a CH4 siya. However, for other types of our antibody, IgD, IgA, IgG, so they're only made up of four in the domains. What's so, having four domains, again, so ito lang siya. We have here the one variable na, rin na domain dito sa taas. Hanggang ang kanyang constant domain, so there are only three. So sa H1, sa H2, sa H3, so wala siya dito sa H4. Okay, that gives you a four in the domain. So that's one of variable domain and there are three constant na domain which includes our CH1, sa H2, sa H3. And therefore, their foot here try to lies on the CH3. Okay, so we can also divide our antibody into two fragments. So we have here the two fragments for that. We have divided here into your FAV and we have also here your FC portion. The FAV here is your anti antigen binding site. So your FAV here is actually above your hinge. So again, this one's your antibody. We have your hinge. So lahat dito, dito sa taas, that's your FAV region. So, it is also your antigen binding site because you can find here, dito kasi ang ating paratope, di ba dito? This is your antibody uh, binding site kung saan magbabind siya doon sa epitope ni antigen natin. So, what are included in the fragments of your fab? So, again, we divide here your antibody into a variable region. So, that's your vari variable light, variable heavy, constant lights, and we have your constant heavy, which is already your CH1. Dito ang CH2 natin sa taas, sa baba. So, all of that one, above your hinge, that consists here the fav, fav na fragments. Uh, the next one, we have here the FC. Okay, the FC fragment is uh, being called here the FC fragment because this one is your crystallizable fragment because this is the portion where when they're making an experiment, they try to undergo uh, crystallization. Okay, so the remaining portion below your hinge here constitutes our FC portion. So, ano makikita sa ating below your hinge? So, it could be a CH2, CH3, or you could have your CH4 if that one is your IgM or IgE. Pero pag IgG, IgD, and IgA, so CH1, CH2, CH3 ka lang. Okay, so the FC portion here actually... Okay, determine the biological activity of our antibody. What uh, what activities you try to determine here? So, responsible for the transplacental transfer. Also allows, this is the site of your binding site of your complement. Okay, so the CH2, for example, here. So, in the case of your IgM antibody, so the complement tend to bind to its CH3. If that one is your IgG, so it can, your complement can bind to your CH2. Anyway, there are only two antibodies wherein their complement can fix or can bind. So, can fix or can bind. So, it can be your IgM or IgG lang. So, kung may complement ka, it can bind to your the FC portion of your antibody through the CH2 if that one is your IgG antibody. And if that one is your CH3, your complement can fix that one by binding to the CH, if that was IgM, CH3. Pag IgG ay nasa CH2. Monocyte can also bind with our antibody through its CH3 portion. Okay, then we have here the term J chain. So the J chain here try to connect each of the monomer or one typical Y shape antibody. So there are antibodies wherein there is not only made up of a monomer in a structure. You can have your dimer, so dalawang Y. So we have here the secretory IgA. You can also have your five. Five na, could have your five na monomer. In the case of your IgM, you call this one your pentamer. So, like for example, this is one, one. So, isa isa ito. There are five of that. And each of this monomer na unit here is being joined together by the J chain. Okay, we have here the term reduction. So, reduction is a process whereby you try to reduce your antibody by. Um, 
by cutting the J chain. So we can have your reducing agent in the form of your DTT, dithiotretol, and your 2-ME, mercaptoethanol. Again, those are your reducing agents. So pag sinabi reducing agent, they try to cut your antibody through their J chain. So ang pwede nyo lang makat, natin antibody dito would be your dimer and your pentamer because those are only having that my J chain. Yung mga typical na monomer natin, so wala silang J chain, so therefore they could not be reduced. Then we have also here the term fragmentation. So fragmentation is a process whereby you try to cut your antibody into several fragments. Okay, so the one utilized here for the fragmentation would be your enzymes. So, example for that, we have your papain. Okay, the papain here, the enzyme, try to uh, cut or try to cleave your antibody through your, above your, sorry, above your Hins region. So, this was your Hins region. Okay, so dito siya magkakat. Okay, since what you have for that, pag nakat ito, okay, so tanggal itong isa, tanggal itong isa, then we have here sa baba. And therefore, what you produce here would be the three na fragments. The F, the Fab here, the Fab 1, and we have also sa baba, we have here an intact na FC. Baka siya intact kasi ang hitch mo naka-attach pa naman siya dito. It's because to try to cut that one above the hinge. Your pepsin, on the other hand, is the enzyme to try to eventually cut your antibody below your hinge. So, kung itong hinge natin, dito siya magka-cut sa baba. Okay, what you produce for that, there are only two na fragments. Okay, so itong buong na to, it's because na dito pa kasi ang hinge, di ba? It would have an intact na itong lahat na ito, the surfab 2. And we have your broken FC portion sa baba. So that will give only, that will give you only here two na fragments if you have your pepsin. And this is a broken FC because... Dito kasi siya nag-cut, dito ang hinge natin, eh wala na mag-attach sa kanila dito sa baba. So, broken na FC portion. We have here the term FAB versus your FAB 2. So, FAB 2 is dalawa, di ba? This is FAB 2. So, it was bigger structure compared to your FAB lang. It's monovalent versus your divalent in the case of your FAB 2. Okay, so we have here the summary of the important characteristics of our different type of our antibodies. So first, we have your molecular weight. So IgG would have here 150,000 Dalton. IgM is 900,000 Dalton. IgA is 160,000. We have IgD is uh, 180,000. And IgE would have here 190,000. So the mutation coefficient or with the Swed S or Swedberg, Swedberg uh, um, coefficient, so the mutation coefficient. So for the IgG, that's your 7S, 19S for the IgM, so 7S also for the IgA, IgD, and we have also here the 8S for our IgE. We have here the relative concentration in our plasma, so IgG concentration here, majority of the concentration of your immunoglobulin in our plasma, constituting here 60 to 75%. Whereas we have here the IgM is 10%, 10 to 15% for the IgA. For the IgD, we have here your uh, less than 1%, and we have here 0 0.002 in the case of your IgE. Half life, so we have 23 days for the IgG. We have also here 6 days for the IgM, 5 days for your IgA, and 1 to 3 days for the Ig. The Ig would have 2 to 3 days. Okay, subclasses, so we have here. Uh, the subclass is determined by their heavy chain. So we have here for the IgG, so that one is made up of four subclasses. We have the IgG 1, 2, 3, and 4. And they are also determined primarily by the number and the characteristics of their disulfide bond. IgM, so there's no subclass for that. IgA, there are two. IgA 1, which are found in our serum, and IgA 2. So we found here in our secretion, so call it one as your uh, secretory IgA. IgD and IgE do not have here the subclasses. And we have here complement fixation, so they have the ability in allowing the binding of our complement. So pwede lang dito sa IgG sa IgM natin. Um, in the case of your IgG, so all the subclasses 
are capable of the complement fixation except your IgG4. So able to cross the placenta, so transplacenta transfer during the mother to the child. So that can only be possible here with our IgG. All the subclasses except your IgG3. All the other antibodies are not capable of transplacental, transplacental transfer. Okay, so we'll be discussing each of the different types of our antibody. We start here with your IgM. So IgM considered to be the largest. Okay, you would have here the 900,000 molecular weight with the uh, so sedimentation coefficient of 19S. So this is the antibody that's being produced here during the primary response or the primary encounter with your antigens. So it can fix the complement. It can, this is an effective in agglutination reaction. But the structure here, we have the shape. You can assume here the star shape that when that one is inactive. It also assumes here your crab shape that when that one is uh, active. Okay, for the valence, so the valence here is the ability to bind, the number of their binding site with our antigen. So if you are talking about the valence, so we have here the typical monomer and antibody. So there are the bodies, this is the fab, this is another fab. So there are two in the binding site of your antigen. Since our IgM is pentamer, so there are five, the right? five times two, that gives you 10 the valence, the your decavalent. Okay, and we consider here the IgM as the most effective in the glutination reaction and clamping and even a complement fixation because, again, this is the largest, okay, pentamer din siya, so therefore it's more effective, the most effective in your agglutination reaction. 